Welcome back. In the last video we talked about how to balance chemical equations and how to write chemical equations. In this video we're going to cover the next dot point which says identify this industrial source of ethylene from the cracking of some of the fractions from the refining of petroleum. And um, we'll go over what petroleum was again, that word petroleum. Petroleum was just crude oil. So petroleum was kind of the oil we get from the ground itself. And what we do with that crude oil, as you can imagine we've got crude oil here, we bring it back into that distillation column. You would have done this in the 11, but I'm going to go over it again. And when you come, when you put the crude oil into this distillation column, that heat will separate crude oil, which is a mixture of lots of different things, into its components, into its individual components, right? So we get crude oil, we heat it, and then we get different components. So for example, we get um, some gas ones, so natural gas. We get gasoline for our cars, so petrol for our cars. We get diesel, which we can use in cars, trucks, and boats. And we also get other ones, such as your resi residual and your heavy gas oils, which are often not used that often. But the thing is that we, the thing that we want is usually the, the ones which have less carbon. So all have carbons in their chain. They're called hydrocarbons because they all have carbons in their chain. But we want to have the ones which have less carbons because they are more valuable to us. Um, but it's not like even though we want all the small carbon ones, the ones which have only a few carbons, many of the ones which are, are produced have quite a few, have long carbons, many carbons in their chain. So the ones that are not used as much, and we want to have some ways to make them useful. Right? But the ones that we like are the ones which are the petrol for the cars, the ones which have mostly eight carbons in the chain. That's called octane. And you might know that word octane because that's the one which, if you go to your petrol station, you usually get octane into your car. And natural gas, so that's your ethane and ethylene. And sometimes we also like our diesel because we can use that in bigger cars and trucks. But the problem is sometimes we have way too many of those bigger ones. And what we do with the bigger ones is we can break them into smaller ones. And that's called cracking. So that, that it says identify industrial source of ethylene from the cracking. So cracking means breaking down. So cracking is kind of breaking down a bigger, bigger one. So breaking down. And that's what we do a lot when it comes to making useful hydrocarbons out of longer hydrocarbons, which aren't used that much. And the one we're going to, to talk about a lot is ethylene. Ethylene is a gas, C2H4. This is the structure of ethylene. I would actually try to, um, I did forget, so it has more, it's double bonds between the two carbons and four hydrogens around it. I would remember this one because it comes up a lot, even though you don't need to write structural formulas a lot, it's good to know the structure of this one. Um, now when it comes to, if we have a long chain, a longer chain, more than six, eight carbons, we can use different techniques to break it into smaller ones. So for this dot point, you should know the different techniques in terms of the names and the chemical formulas. I'm going to go over both of those. I'm also going to go over the procedure in a bit of detail. You don't need to remember this procedure in detail, but I would I would recommend to just listen because it's quite interesting. And also, in one of the next dot points, you will need to be able to recall one of these procedures. So I'm going to go over now a similar one so that the next one won't sound so foreign to you. Uh, so this is a dec decane. Decane, dec means 10, so it has 10 carbons in its chain. So if you look at here, these brown dots are the carbons, it's got 10 carbons, and 22 hydrogens attached to those 10 carbons. This is the structure of decane. But it has 10, and 10 is often it's useful, but not that useful. We want to have less than 10. So we want to have 8 or ethylene. In the case of ethylene, if we want to produce ethylene, we want to have uh, C2H4, so 2 carbon in its chain. So what we do is we put decane, so here we've got, on one hand we put decane in here, long hydrocarbons, and the other end we put steam. And what happens is they both go down this chain, this, this coil, it's called a priolus coil, and they go down this, this coil. What happens there is it actually gets broken down in smaller bits. I'll explain how that happens. So what we do is we add steam, so that I mentioned earlier that steam, and also steam has to be at a certain temperature. So this has to be about 750 degrees Celsius. What the steam does is the steam breaks down this decane, which has 10 carbons, into two, so two, five carbon chains. So now each of these has five carbons. But the one thing that's unique about these five carbon chains is that red dot. And what I mean by this red dot, as the name suggests, it's a pentyl 
radical pent stands for five, so it has five carbons in this chain, but it's a radical. And radical means that because now we've broken the chain, you can imagine these two red dots were holding hands beforehand, but now we separated them. We kind of cut them in two and they're not too happy. And the reason why they're not too happy is because beforehand they were sharing their carbon, their atoms. A carbon by itself has four, um, four electrons and all atoms want to have eight electrons in the outer shell. They're only going to be happy if they have eight electrons. Now the problem is because we cut them into two. We have this carbon still shares with two hydrogens and a carbon next to it. But that other bond was broken. So if you count the actual L electrons, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, and a cross for one that is one that is missing. So this one only has seven electrons in its outer shell. It wants to have eight, so now it's unhappy. It's not happy. It was happy beforehand, but because we cut it into two parts, each of those ends not only has seven electrons. So these ends are not happy because they've just gotten taken away one of their electrons. So what happens is as soon as this happens, as soon as the breaking happens, these pencil radicals will actually decompose. And what I might mean by decompose, it, it goes from a five carbon chain into a three carbon chain called the propyl radicals. So that's, that's what happens right here. And also an ethylene. So this part here, that's your ethylene. And remember, that's what we want to get. We want to get ethylene. So right now we've actually managed to produce ethylene, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So we've broken, and this happens twice because we had tw two five carbon chains. So these five carbon chains break, decompose, they break up into a three carbon chain and ethylene. That happens twice because we had two of them. And to end this whole uh, chemical reaction, what, what happens is both those two that we produced, this one comes from here, this one comes from here, they react together. As you can imagine, you have going to have these ends which are missing electrons. They're going to join up together. And when they join up together, that means they're sharing their electrons and they're missing one. But as soon as they share their electrons, they're not missing one. They both have enough and then they're happy again. Right? So we have two of these propyl radicals, so three carbon ones, join together and become hexane. And hexane is not a radical because it's happy. It has every single carbon has full electrons. And what can happen next is we can make that hexane back into, go through that coil again, make more ethylene or use it somewhere else. But the thing, the, the main part about this one is we've cracked a decane, a 10 carbon into um, ethylene. So we've gotten two ethylene molecules out of this. This whole procedure has given us two ethylene products. And we can use the ethylene to make plastics and solvents. Ethylene is really useful for making plastics. And we're going to go over that in a later video. But that was the whole idea of thermal cracking. We use one of these um, coiled machines, which have their high steam temperatures of 750 degrees Celsius. We put a decane molecule, which has 10 carbons. Through um, cracking, it goes into five carbons. When it's in a five carbon state, it's really unhappy. It will decompose into a three carbon and into ethylene molecule. So then here we have gotten our ethylene molecule, two of them, because it happens twice. Uh, and the um, radicals, they join together to end the chemical reaction, because when they join together, they're happy again, because all the carbons have the full eight electrons in their shell. Right, so that was thermal cracking. And then catalytic cracking is similar. We have, again, we have that decane, which is a 10 carbon chain. And what we can do is we can put that dent that we have a uh, zeolite uh, catalyst here. And we can put this one, so that decane, in the presence of a catalyst. So presence means it has to be close by to so this catalyst. And we also need to have high temperatures, less than the other ones. Less was, the other one was 750. This one's only 500. But we still need to have, have temperatures as well, high temperatures. So we have 500 degrees Celsius, and we have this catalyst. And what you can imagine, I'm going to draw it in yellow. These catalysts have lots of space. So you're going to have your yellow dots being your decane, kind of coming into the middle of this catalyst. What's going to happen is they're going to be cut, cut here. So they, these catalysts help cut them. And once they, they're cut, we're going to have an octane. So out of a 10 carbon, we're going to produce one 2 carbon, which is our ethylene. That's a 2 carbon one. And one 8 carbon one. That's octane. All right, so 8 carbon, so this is going to be used for petrol. And ethylene is going to be used to make plastics and other things. 
but we, we haven't lost any carbons. We had 10 carbons to begin with. Then we cut into two different things, into a two carbon molecule and into eight carbon molecule. So we still have 10 overall. But that was, that's the zeolite catalyst. Allows us to use less heat and still get the same job done because the zeolite catalyst will speed up a reaction, make, make it happen faster and will help break down a dec decay molecule into an octane and an ethylene. So that's good as well because now we have ethylene and we can want it ethylene. So there's two ways we can produce ethylene, which is really useful, molecule, either for thermal cracking, which is using high temperatures to um, break it down, or catalytic cracking, which is using temperatures, a bit lower temperatures, but a zeolite catalyst, which is kind of where they bind and then they can break down in the catalyst itself. Um, and now what I'm going to do next is because we need to know your chemical equations for them as well, so I'm going to go over the chemical equations of those. Now we're going to look at the actual chemical equations. Uh, first we look at one for thermal cracking of decaying. Remember thermal just meant temperature and cracking just the breaking apart. We cracked into two, breaking apart. Um, so we're looking at the breaking apart of decaying using temperatures. So this was the word equation, decaying in the presence, so this is the chemical reaction arrow, and on top you have to put your temperature. So that means that it's going to crack into, in the presence of temperature into ethylene and hexane. So these are your products. So that was your word equation, and this is your um, chemical formula, C10H22, which is liquid, so that's a liquid form, turns in the presence of that, energy, that um, temperature into C2H4, which is ethylene. And that's gaseous, so G for gas. And C plus C6H14, and that was your hexane, and that was liquid. But we also still have to balance the chemical formulas. We're going to see if we have a balance on both sides. So here we've got 10 carbon and 22 hydrogens um, on the one side, on the reactant side. On the product side, we have here 2 plus, we have six from here, so that's eight. And we've got four here plus 14 over here. So that is 18 on this side. So now obviously we can see we've got 10 on the on the reactant side, but only eight on the product side for carbon. And we've got 22 for the hydrogens and only 18 for hydrogen, hydrogens in terms of the products. So it's not balanced. We have more on one side, the other side. So what we can do is if we put a two in front of this one, that means all of these atoms get doubled, which means we just have two molecules of ethylene. Um, so now we double that, so we go from two to four. And also, we also have to double the, the hydrogen as well, because that was C2H4, we're doubling all of it. So instead of eight, four, we have eight now. So now we can look at it again. Four plus six, that's 10, that's good. Eight plus 14, that is 22. So now it's balanced. Now the product and reactants have the same amount. So I had to put that two in front to balance. Um, so then we had the thermal cracking of ethane. Now this was an example I used in the last video. And you don't have to remember this, but this was just a different way of doing the cracking. So we had decay in the example of decay beforehand, but this is actually with ethane. So ethane is also gas. The chemical formula is C2H6. And what we can do is we, in the presence of a lot of energy, so a lot of heat, we can break it down into ethylene, which is what we want, and the hydrogen gas as well. Um, and that's that the whole chemical formula is C2H6, in the presence of 850 degrees Celsius, so more temperature, makes C2H4, that's ethylene, and hydrogen gas. And if you look at the actual, if it's balanced or not, we will have a look. So we have two here, we have two on that side as well. We have six of these on this side, and we've got four here and two there, so that's six, so it's balanced. We don't have to change anything. All right, so don't have to remember the thermal cracking of ethane, just remember that we can make ethylene for the thermal cracking of longer chain hydrocarbons. Um, we also have the catalytic cracking of decane, so that was when we had the zeolite catalyst. And in this case, we've got decane, the zeolite catalyst, but purposefully left out something and left out the temperature. So we also need to have 500 degrees Celsius to make that happen. So we have to have the catalyst and that temperature to break down decay into ethylene 
and octane. So ethylene and octane were the product, and decan was the reactant. When it comes to the chemical formula, it would be C10H22, that's decane, and that's liquid. In the presence of that of this catalyst plus the 500 degrees Celsius, turns into ethylene, which is C2H4 right here, plus your octane, which is that petrol, CH. H, uh, C8H18, which is a liquid. And if we were to look at if it's balanced or not, we've got 10 carbons here. We've got 2 plus 8 here. So it's 10 on every side. 2 plus 8 is 10, 10 on the other side. And let's have a look at the actual hydrogen. We've got 22 on this side. And we've got 4 here and plus 18. And that's also 22, so balance as well. Um, so the main thing to remember was you have identified the industrial source of ethylene from the cracking of some of the refractions from refining of petroleum. If we crack longer carbon, so longer chains of these um, heavy oils or diesel oil or anything that's longer than what we want, we can make them smaller, we can crack them to smaller ones. So for example, of decane, which was a 10 carbon molecule, we can crack the smaller ones, and that way we can get ethylene. And ethylene is really important because it has very many good uses, which we'll find about very soon as well. And there's two ways we can do it. There's thermal cracking of decane, and there's catalytic cracking of decane. Thermal cracking requires only heat to break it apart, and catalytic cracking requires heat, less heat than thermal cracking, but we also require a catalyst. So we use a zeolite catalyst um, usually. Right? So hopefully that was useful.